Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, welcome back. My name is Dante, aka Dante DeFi, and today we're going to be discussing BitTensor, aka Tau. And just putting this out there, this is not going to be a video where I discuss the fundamentals of Tau so much as I am going to discuss the price action of Tau. And uh, this is a project, uh, a crypto that I have been following for pretty much the whole year at this point. It's crazy to think that uh, 2020 three is already over. Like we're already into 2024. Uh, this year, uh, one of the best performing assets in the space, uh, something again, like I said, that I've been following since basically the start of the year. And it's done incredibly well. It's gone from, you know, if you were buying at the absolute bottom, uh, under 50 bucks, and it's it, it went all the way up to almost 400, touching 400 uh, the other day, uh, really just hit under 400. And the price action on this thing, like I said, has been absolutely insane. To give you a really, you know, a, a very brief understanding of why it is an asset that has just really blown blown away my just expectations on uh, what is possible. It has a max supply of 21 million, the same as Bitcoin. It also currently has about 5.8 million that are already in circulating supply. And it has a model that is similar to that of Bitcoin. Again, I'm oversimplifying this because there's plenty of videos and plenty of resources out there to get really deep into the project. And again, the main thing here is I don't fully understand if this project fundamentally is viable long term. I don't. I'm just simply looking at things at this point where, where my philosophy on crypto is, is that we're looking at what we can buy and hold and that is going to outperform basically any other asset class for the next year, two years. Whether it's fundamentally sound or not, again, it, it may matter very long term, uh, but for the sake of how I look at things now, I'm looking at what can I hold for the next year if Bitcoin's going above $100,000? What can I hold that's going to outperform Bitcoin? And then at the same time, again, in the fastest asset cl fastest growing asset class in history, it's really hard to say that, I promise you. What are those assets that are going to even outperform it, it, the, the likes of Bitcoin, right? Because that's really the only point of investing in anything but Bitcoin. You know, there, you know, again, discussions with people in, in my close circles uh, about, isn't it just, you know, at the start of this year, like just convert everything to Bitcoin, you would have done really well if you had done that from all the altcoins that we hold. I still hold a lot of altcoins that, um, again, have not outperformed Bitcoin, but I still believe will do multiples from where they're at in price right now. Uh, things like quant, uh, Chainlink, Chain, I mean, and and they have performed well. Chainlink has performed well from its bottom. Uh, we were looking at that that chart uh, again on Twitter at four dollars when it was it was just a, a sheer uh, bloodbath in the crypto markets, and and since then, you know, it went to an all time high of seventeen in this last local rally. Uh, but anyway, the reason I'm bringing you guys a bit tenser is because. In terms of when we talk about supply shock, we talk about projects that have this ability to uh, have a scarce amount of, of supply that's actually distributed to people so that people who believe in the project or people who understand the fundamentals or who are hold, holding for a longer term um, outcome, um, when there is enough of those people, it basically allows for there to be this thing called a supply shock, right? That we've talked about this years ago. People talk about it all the time in the crypto space, like, and I have never seen an asset where a true supply shock is actually on 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 the horizon. You know, with quant, it's been there's been times where the exchanges have been at such a low amount of of quant on exchanges, but it hasn't really resulted in any price action increase. Uh, so, even when there are those situations where it may look like there's a supply shock, the actual impact on price hasn't actually come to fruition. Now with Tau. The main point of where, where I'm getting at with t this is that with Tau, I think it's the first time I've ever seen a project where the scarcity of the asset itself does result in a huge in influx of um, or huge um, increases in price very quickly. Now, again, this can work in both directions. So it's not something that, uh, you know, we can only say is going to work in one direction and not the other. If you look at this, Tau went from what what was the low here like $43 all the way up to 400 it did a 10x it did a 10x in in the span of 
it's terrible to say this, but less than two months, you know, uh, for those who, you know, kind of missed this move. But the real catalyst for this was, again, they did release the subnets so people were able to develop their own subnets uh, on the BitTensor ecosystem. Now, again, I don't want to go into too much detail because it's very intricate stuff, stuff that I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I understand completely. Uh, but again, you can build and there are things being built on top of the BitTensor network. And this is just a graphic of some, some of these subnets that exist. And inherently, again, there's a whole game theory behind how the token is involved in all of this. Um, and that game theory supposedly, or is supposed to operate in a way in which the demand for Tau is a consistent one. Um, and with the way the emissions work, the halvenings, all of the same kind of tokenomics that you're used to with Bitcoin do exist with Tau as well. The same um, total supply at the end of the day. But again, with a various amount of uh, utility attached to the, t the token that, okay, with Bitcoin, we can say outside of ordinals, NFTs, um, and then storing and holding for value does not really uh, have right now. And again, this is not something that's going to compete with Bitcoin. It's totally different, but it's almost like, you know, the narrative here is that it is the, the AI play that is the equivalent to Bitcoin. It's like the Bitcoin of decentralized AI, crypto, etc. And it has been in development for several years um, and has, you know, people working on the project that are reputable. All these things really don't matter. At the end of the day, the price can still dump, but these are just things that are increasing the narrative that uh, are getting people excited about the project. And then also, as you can see, why we're having these wild prices going from 43 to above 400. Now, I'm bringing this up because I'm, I'm interested in this project. I look at the price a lot. Um, I'm invested in the project, so I'm bringing it forth to you as something that, again, we talked about at 60 bucks, and now it's a lot higher, and we're gonna continue to see where it goes. It could go to 1,000. It could go back to 10 bucks uh, when people were trading it under $10 um, over-the-counter OTC. Um, you don't know. We don't know. But if Bitcoin is going to continue, again, like I said, going up to prices of 100K or more, if this is really the fifth wave of, of, of a final massive bull run that has been going on since basically, you know, prior to uh, COVID, then we're in the last leg of a massive bull run. And, and this will see, you know, great price action. It already has seen, you know, massive price action. So, could it retrace from here? Yes, absolutely. As violently as it went up, it could go down. Uh, but what is interesting is like this project has a lot of utility behind it. There's a lot of great, strong fundamentals, supposedly, that are keeping people around, keeping the narrative going. And I'm not buying into any of this. All I'm saying to you is that this all means that it is good for price, especially in a bull run. I'm not saying that this is you know, going to take OpenAI's uh, $80 billion valuation and uh, bring it into the crypto space or take away from what's what's being developed outside of, uh, you know, the confines of BitTensor, but it's the narrative, guys. We're following the narrative here, and if it results in positive price action, you know, that's a good thing, uh, especially when, like I said, if Bitcoin continues to go up, there's no telling where this could go. Uh, the fact that it's even at 300 and almost touched $400 to me is unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. Um, and it'll be an interesting one to see uh, progress. So again, maybe one for you guys to look at uh, if you're interested. Again, don't fully understand. I, I mean, I understand it, but don't feel like comfortable sitting here and going in depth with you guys. There's more out information out there that you should, uh, if you're interested in BitTensor, take a look at. But just wanted to put it on your radar as something that I've been looking at. For those of you who've been following me on Twitter, you know I've been looking at it. We've been talking about it for, again, the better part of uh, this year. So anyway, guys, I hope you, you know, got some uh, value out of this or just, you know, if you've been looking into BitTensor, hopefully you got in before it went up 10x. If not, I think we're still early, especially if, uh, again, the fifth wave of the cycle is still playing out. Bitcoin has still got a long way to go to all-time highs. It's not that crazy. It's not a large amount of liquidity that needs to come to the market to push it there. Uh, but you just, you never know, guys. You never know. Like I told you guys at the end of the day, a lot in the last video, capital preservation is key. And that's that's where, where my focus is at all times. But it's cool to speculate on this stuff nonetheless. All that being said, 
do your own research. None of it is financial advice. Be very careful uh, with all this stuff. It's extremely degenerate. Um, and yeah, guys, we'll, we'll, we'll talk soon. I'll see ya.